Hi, I'm Dan Burton. You're watching FedScoop TV. I'm here today talking with Don Dixon. Don is the Senior Vice President for Global Document Outsourcing Business Group at Xerox. Don, thanks so much for being here. It's my pleasure to be here. So Don, obviously today we're at the sixth annual Lowering the Cost of Government with IT. Yep. And um, want to get your perspective on what you think some of the immediate opportunities are for leveraging emerging technologies to actually accomplish that. Yeah, I'm super excited to be here, by the way. Um, I do believe that this is an important space and an important topic. Um, we have been, Xerox has been over the last de decade or more, talking about how they can help companies and enterprises and organizations lower their costs. And the immediate opportunity that I see around us is the paper-based business processes that we, that we are all involved in. We've been talking about the paperless office or less paper in the office for quite some time. And uh, my, my take is that if we really look at um, the paper coming out of the printer or the paper coming off of the copier, um, we're only getting the tip of the iceberg, if you will. We're only getting a small portion of the cost, uh, the, the five cents a page or three cents a page or 15 cents a page. That's only a small percentage of, um, of the cost of, of printing. When I was at Gartner, we did some empirical research around the cost of printing, and uh, you would be interested to know that the vast majority of the cost lies in the actual process that brings the paper to the output tray. So people are working on the paper when it's created. The paper has a document life cycle. Uh, all of those uh, steps in the document life cycle have costs associated with them, but no one looks at that. All they look at is the paper coming out of the device and they say, oh, that's three cents per page or that's five cents per page and that's the cost that they see. But in fact, that's just a very, very small portion of the cost. The vast majority of the costs lie in the process that we engage in. That's, that's the first time I've ever heard that analysis, I gotta be honest with you. So we've been talking about paperless oh, yeah. offices for a decade or more, right? That's why it hasn't gone away, and, right? <laughs> and you're, you're telling me that the cost of the six seconds it takes for that page to come out, uh -huh. the paper and the and the ink, is really not the issue anyway. It and isn't. that's what the issue has been. we've been told right. has been for the last ten years. Precisely, that's been the focus of most of the conversations that I've heard, and I've been trying for quite some time to get people to say, listen. If we only focus on the paper coming out of the device, we're only seeing maybe ten or fifteen percent of the total cost. Right? There are ad hoc paper-based business processes, someone walk up to a device and they scan a piece of paper into a repository. Then later on, someone goes up to that repository and prints that piece of paper. We're talking about a process or something a little bit more structured like uh, invoice processing or account opening at a bank or whatever the case may be. This is paper at work, right? This is paper at work and the business process is in the paper. Right, so if you're going to look just at the paper coming out the device, you're missing 75, 80 percent of the cost. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, and I, I might want to explore that in a little while, sure. uh, some more, but um, I want to move on to open data. Yeah. Um, what's your opinion on the role that open data has played uh, to help improve uh, government efficiency? I think it's a great idea. Much like the open source ideas of the past, uh, making data freely available without restrictions is a great idea. Uh, what, I, what I think is happening though, much as in open source and other uh, such movements before, we have layered open data with all of the restrictions and the copyright infringements and the costs associated with restricting access to the data for real um, so that we have not quite made it open, right? So the idea is wonderful, but we, I, I still, the, ju I, the jury is still out. I still think that we have a lot more work to do vis-a-vis -vis, uh, making data freely accessible. It, it's not really doing us any good if we're still um, putting padlock on the data where, where it is in its source. And so my, my encouragement is for us, if we really want open data, we need to make it freely accessible so that it can do the communal good that we've been talking about. So, you know, a lot of what we were just talking about with the, the cost of paper versus the cost of the process uh, is related to the budget pressures um, yeah, that okay. the federal government's f uh, focused on right now yeah. and dealing with. Um, and there's a lot of talk about, okay, is there a rush to the bottom? You know, mm -hmm. lowest cost, technically feasible yeah, or acceptable. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you think federal agencies are still able to get 
value out of their acquisitions? They're getting some value, but they're not maximizing it. They're not getting true value because a rush to the bottom, getting the lowest cost per page forces the provider, right, Xerox and others, to um, minister to that need, right, to cater to this lowest cost of acquisition. The problem is that in order to get value, we need to build the infrastructure in order to deliver it. So customers are going to be requiring um, the way they work today, mobile and secure. They're going to be requiring an infrastructure that provides mobility access. So if you want to, for example, print from your mobile device, from your tablet, anywhere at any time, if you want to go on a college campus and ask the average student today, how do they deal with paper, they're going to talk about how do we deal with documents. Paper is one uh, um, part of it. And so we need to provide access to those users of that information in the way that um, they would like to work. When we rush to the bottom, we circumvent that and so the providers are going to be forced to give you what you have asked for the total the lowest possible cost of acquisition but in my opinion they are neglecting the necessary improvements in the infrastructure to deliver what the future is going to require so you know the other part of this question I think you might have an interesting take on this which would have been should we focus on improving the acquisition process but, but perhaps from your perspective it's improving other parts of the process that yeah. could help drive efficiency. Yeah, absolutely. So there's more than just the acquisition cost, right? There's the running cost, right? People talk about, you know, supplies and paper and all of that kind of stuff. My, my, my take on it is um, we need to look down the road a piece and say, all right, what will my business need? in this particular area in three to five to seven to ten years and build that infrastructure to, to minister to that need. It's kind of like what we're doing in our management services strategy. Uh, we tell customers that we really can't take cost out just like that. We need to look at your whole document life cycle. So we do an assessment, right? The assessment says, okay, let's find out what you have, right? Because we can't design a future state without knowing the current state. So the assessment is around, you know, finding all the devices, who's printing here, why are they printing, how much are they printing, are they printing monochrome or color, etc. Then once we understand that very well, then we design a future state. So we know what your needs are, then we can optimize, if you will, the future state. So that's our first stage in our strategy, assess and then optimize. Then the next stage is then we build in things like security and mobility so that customers can work the way they want to work. They want it integrated into their existing operating system, their in yeah. existing infrastructure. And then finally, we want to go work on those paper-based uh, workflows that we talked about earlier in terms of making sure that the paper-based business processes that you're engaging with, whatever it may be, you know, it's your expense report process that you come from a business meeting and you want to, you know, you want to get those expenses into the ERP system or whatever the case may be. That's a paper-based process. We want to optimize that so that the way in which people engage with paper is very, very efficient. So that's a great segue uh, yeah. to the final question, which is, you know, put your crystal ball yeah. uh, out and look five, ten years in the future. Yeah. What will the federal IT enterprise look like, and will it in fact cost less money to operate? No, it won't cost less money to operate, I can tell you that for sure. Um, and the reason is because the consumerization trend that we see today in the traditional enterprise will accelerate with BYOD, with us asking things like, can I operate, can I work in my office similar to the way that I work in my home or in my personal life. I want to bring my own device. I want to use my same apps. When I walk up to the device, can I have the same experience? Right? Can I have the same experience? When I move from device to the device, do I have the same experience? Does my profiles come with me? How do we enable all of that? That requires technology investments in the infrastructure that we don't have today in the, in the federal government. There are some um, more progressive, more um, tech savvy uh, industries that are taking us there today. And so if you were to look at our portfolio, we have a myriad of offers um, dealing with mobility, as we talked about earlier, dealing with security, dealing with sustainability. The federal government is going to want to be much sustainable in the way in which they print, in the way in which they manage their print. And we believe that those kinds of requirements 
coming from this, the, the consumerization trend will require the kinds of investments that I don't see happening right now today. Great. Yeah. Well, Don, thank you so much for your time today. Oh, Dan, it's we my appreciate pleasure. It. Yeah. Thank you so very thank much. Thank you. Okay. I'm Dan Verton. You've been watching FedScoop TV. Thanks very much.